Hey y'all, um, I just wanted to make a little video solving one of these problems from the delta math activity where we were graphing rational functions. I think it's useful for us to learn how to graph these rational functions since it would, for it kind of, uh, in order to graph them, you need to understand all the pieces and all these features and all that. And it's, it just is a really epic display of knowledge to graph a rational function. So to get us started, let me go ahead and um, get a new problem for me, for myself. Um, so let's go ahead and new problem, new problem. I wanted to find one that's kind of hard. This one looks, this one looks challenging. So we'll use this one. How about that? Does that look good? Yeah, looks good. All right, y'all. So to get things going, let me go ahead and go to my whiteboard. Um, so for this, I should probably copy down the problem. It was f of x equals 5x squared plus 25x all over negative uh, 3x squared minus 21x minus 30. All right, y'all. So um, saying when you start off working with a new rational function, I very strongly recommend just starting off by factoring the top and bottom. Just factor it as much as you can because in the end, knowing all these factors is gonna be really important for us to find things like the x-intercept and the discontinuities. Um, because if you guys remember, x-intercept of a function is when the function equals zero, right? Uh, if my function is a fraction, it will only equal zero when the top equals zero, right? The numerator. So the x-intercept is always the zeros of the numerator. All right. Um, discontinuities are always caused by caused by division by zero, right? Whenever I divide by zero, I get a discontinuity. So when do I divide by zero? It's when the bottom equals zero. So discontinuities happen at the zeros of the denominator. So this is exactly why, because finding zeros is all about factoring. This is why I want to factor it. Okay, to start things off. So let's go ahead and factor the top and bottom. So the top here, uh, it looks like I have two terms. They both have a five and an X. So I'm gonna pull out five X. And what am I left with? I'm left with X plus five. All right, let's look at the bottom here. They all, every term has a, a multiple of negative three. So I'm gonna pull out negative three. And I'm left with X squared uh, plus seven X plus 10. All right, well, um, I have a feeling that I can factor that still. Yeah, I can, I can. Because the bottom here would factor as a quadratic would. Um, it'll be x plus five and x plus two. And up top we have five x times x plus five. All righty, so we can now, now that we've factored it, we can start finding all these features. So we said the x-intercept is the zeros of the numerator at the top. Well, that would be at x equals 0 and x equals negative 5. Discontinuities are the zeros of the denominator. So that would be at negative 5 and 2. Now, saying that I want to point out to y'all, notice that I have a x-intercept at negative 5 and I have a discontinuity at negative 5. This these were both created by factors of x plus 5 in the numerator and the denominator. If I have an x plus 5 factor on top and an x plus 5 factor on bottom, you guys know what that does? It cancels out. Therefore, this is what we call, this is what we call a removable, oops, that's how you spell removable removable discontinuity. This here is a removable discontinuity uh, because it was able to cancel out. 
What does that imply? That implies that there is a hole at negative five. Negative five is a hole. So essentially guys, whenever you have these factors, if the, if the factor on the bottom cancels out with the factor on top, then it creates a hole at that x at that x value. Because there's a hole, there would actually not be an x-intercept. So I only have an x-intercept at zero. I have a hole at negative five, and the two here doesn't cancel out, so that means it is an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, most importantly. Vertical asymptote. All right, all right, all right. So we've got those things. Let's go ahead and go back to our graph. Let's go back to our graph and let's add those. So we know that there is a x-intercept at x equals zero, we said. And there is a, a hole at negative five. I'm going to put that hole over at x equals negative five. And there was a vertical asymptote at x equals two. So I've got those guys really added. All right, let's keep going then. Let's keep going. What else can we find? We need the y-intercept. Uh, y-intercept, if you guys remember, is caused by uh, x equals zero. So it's f of zero. Um, not too hard to find. Uh, if I plug in, if I plug in zero to this, I get, uh, if I plug in f of zero, what do I get? I get zero plus zero on top, so that's zero. On bottom, I get negative 30. Zero divided by negative 30 is zero. So my y-intercept is zero. And uh, you know it's crazy? Um, look at that. My If my x-intercept is zero, then of course the y-intercept is zero. So it's already been plotted for us, actually. Kind of, kind of fun. All right, all right, let's go back. And then finally, end behavior. End behavior. How do we find end behavior? If you guys remember, end behavior in polynomials was all about the lead term. But here I have two polynomials, right? And they're dividing. So what I do for end behavior is I divide the leading terms. It's it's what we call the quotient. Quotient is like the result of division. The quotient of the leading terms. So I'm going to take my leading term of 5x squared, and I'm going to take my leading term of negative 3x squared, and I'm going to divide them, and that'll give me negative 5 thirds. Um, and uh, because it's end behavior, end behavior is also oftentimes called a horizontal asymptote. It's called a horizontal asymptote when it's horizontal because uh, end behavior is always, like the quotient of the lead terms is y equals, the, or the end behavior is always y equals that quotient. So in this case, I have y equals negative 5 thirds. Um, having, a, having y equals negative 5 thirds, that creates on my graph here a horizontal asymptote. That's the end behavior. So the end behavior would be the horizontal asymptote at negative 5 thirds. Where is negative 5 thirds? Uh, well, negative 6 thirds would be negative 2. So it's just under, just just short of negative two. All right, you guys see that? So I found my x-intercept, my y-intercept, my discontinuities, my asymptote, and my hole, and I've found my end behavior. There's one last thing here that I want us to look at, and it's about finding the y-coordinate of the hole. Because here's the thing, a hole, as you guys can see, um, in our in our graph this hole it doesn't just have to be on the x-axis it could also be somewhere around here up here it could be anywhere right so I need to know what the y coordinate is of this hole where like where it is so what I do to find that um, I already did have to did all the work I canceled out these factors so to find the location the y the y coordinate of your hole you just have to cancel out the uh, the factors. And you get five x over negative three times x plus two. And you just plug in the x the x value of the whole. So it's like what it, when I plug negative five in, what do I get? I get five times negative five is negative twenty five. Uh, negative five plus two is negative three. Um, here, let me let me show the work actually. So I'm I'm plugging in f of negative five, and I get five times negative five over negative three times negative five plus two. What does that equal? That equals negative 25 over uh, negative three times negative three. That would be negative 25 over 
nine. Uh, negative 25 over nine, damn. How many times does nine go into 25? Uh, it goes in like twice, and then like seven over nine. So it's like just short of three. You see, do you, you guys kind of get what I'm saying here? Oh, but it's negative, right? So negative three. So it's just short of negative three. So then let's see how that looks for our graph. So the whole, I'm gonna move down to uh, being just short of negative three, just short of that. And uh, when I click plot the rational function, I see, oh, okay, actually I messed it up, huh? You see that? It's like, oh, okay, something is off here. Something I messed up, huh? All right, let's see what we messed up on. You know, sometimes we all make mistakes, y'all. Um, I factored it fine. I factored this guy fine, yeah. Yo, Mr. Hoban shambles out here, bro. Dang. Oh, wait. <laughs> Damn, dude, this is crazy, isn't it? Crazy, isn't it? Um, you know what we're gonna do, man? This is a great time to pull out Desmos. Actually, you know what, why not? Why not just submit, submit our answer as is? Let's just submit our answer. Let's see what it, let's see what they tell us. Okay, they said nah, man, nah. Why? Why did I get it wrong? What did I get wrong? Oh, look at that! Wouldn't you look at that? I put the y-intercept. I well, I put the the uh, the vertical asymptote at x equals two, but it was supposed to be at x equals negative two. Lamau. That's crazy because it is because if you guys see, it was x plus two, so it shouldn't be a discontinuity at positive; it should be at negative two. Oh man, that's crazy, isn't it? All right, y'all. Well, you know this is this is. I'm gonna still use this because I think that we had good discussion, and you know what? It's good to see that uh, even even I like your teacher makes makes mistakes in these things, man. It's not like I'm perfect all the time. That was a small mistake to make. So, um, you know what? Just to be safe, then, in this video, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do one more. We're gonna do one more example. Let's do one more example out here, just because, um, for the sake of you know getting it right, one, getting it right for one of them. So here, I've got the function negative uh, two x plus four over x squared minus four. I'm gonna just kind of go over this real quick. Um, so let's go back to our whiteboard. It was f of x equals negative two x plus four over x squared minus four, right? All right, so factoring this guy out, you get, you could pull negative two out, you get x minus two. On the bottom, you get x plus two times x minus two. So what do we see? Um, first of all, notice that x minus two and x minus two will cancel. So already, right away, I know that I have a hole. I know that I have a hole at x equals two. Here, I have a denominator of x plus two. So that gives me an asymptote at, um, at x equals negative two. You gotta be careful on it this time. Um, what else, what else? Uh, notice that once I have canceled that, what do I have left? I have negative two over x plus two. This guy has no x-intercept because the top part can't equal zero. So x-intercept, none. And then finally, y-intercept, not finally. Uh, one other thing, y-intercept, it's uh, when you plug in zero for x. When I plug in zero, I get four over negative four which is negative one. And finally, the end behavior. Is uh, y equals the lead terms divided, right? The leading terms divided. So that would be uh, negative two x over x squared. That is negative two over x. If there is an x in the bottom for my end behavior, that implies that it is y equals zero. Okay, because if you think about it, as x gets really big, this fraction will get really small. 
So on the ends of it, the function will go to zero. Let's uh, go ahead and plot these, these pieces then. So we said we have a horizontal asymptote, the end behavior at zero. Boom, there's zero. Uh, we said that it has no x-intercepts, but it has a y-intercept at negative one. We said it has an asymptote at negative two. Let me double check that this time. Yes, that's true. And we said it has a hole at x equals two. Now here's the thing though, we should probably figure out the y-coordinate of that hole, right? So let's figure out the y-coordinate of that hole. Uh, all you gotta do is plug two into this function. So it's negative two over two plus two. That's negative two over four. That is negative one half. So the hole should be at two comma negative one half. Uh, right there. All right, so now we should be able to plot it. See how, okay, this looks a lot better, right? It's going, the line is actually going through the points that we created and following the asymptotes. I'm gonna submit the answer. And we did good. Yay! <laughs> we did it, huh? All right, y'all. Well, hope this was good. Hope that this was helpful. Um, and uh, I'll see y'all around next time. All right, bye-bye.